Welcome to the Rare History Channel. The Unexpected Presidency, 13 Surprising and Rarely Revealed Facts About Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland, the 22nd and 24th President of the United States, stands alone in American history as the only president to serve non-consecutive terms. He was a man of many surprises and captivating contradictions. His presidency was marked by scandal, secrecy, and unprecedented actions that continue to fascinate historians and the public. From clandestine surgeries to controversial pardons, Cleveland's life and time in the White House were filled with shocking and rare occurrences. In this video, we explore 13 astonishing facts about Grover Cleveland, unveiling the lesser-known aspects of his persona and presidency. Get ready to be captivated as we uncover the hidden stories behind one of America's most intriguing leaders. Fact number 1. Grover Cleveland real name was Stephen. The first of our Grover Cleveland facts is that his birth name was not actually Grover. He was originally named Stephen Grover in honor of the first pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Caldwell, where his own father also served as pastor. Grover Cleveland facts reveal that the future president was quite big, even as a child, and was often teased about this. He therefore dropped the name Stephen in his early 20s because he got tired of his childhood nickname, Big Steve. Number 2. Grover Cleveland was obese. Weighing 250 pounds, Cleveland was the first U.S. president who was very overweight, though he is not the only overweight president in history, nor was he the biggest. The most overweight, so far, was President William Howard Taft, 1909-1913. Cleveland did not gain that weight during his presidency, however. He was always overweight, which was why friends and family called him Big Steve. Fitness magazine even called him the least healthiest president, because of his habits of smoking cigars and drinking far too much beer. Number 3. Grover Cleveland was related to the founder of Cleveland. Another of our Grover Cleveland facts reveals that he was a direct descendant of General Moses Cleveland, the man who founded the city of Cleveland, Ohio. Moses was also a lawyer, politician, and surveyor. He surveyed the site on which the city would be built, planned what became its downtown area, and gave it his surname on July 22, 1796. Rather than expel the area's natives by force as was then customary, however, Moses peacefully negotiated with them for the land. Number 4. Grover Cleveland had to quit school many times. Grover's father, Richard Foley Cleveland, was a pastor and missionary who never made enough money to support his family of nine children. Grover was the fifth born, and, like his other siblings, had to quit school several times in order to help bring in money. One of his jobs involved a two-year stint as a merchant's apprentice in Fayetteville, which forced him to leave the family. He would later claim that he learned more from that apprenticeship than he did at school. Number 5. Grover Cleveland's uncle got him started in politics. Cleveland's uncle was Louis W. Allen, an important man who introduced him to politicians and prominent lawyers. This would signal the start of his career, for Cleveland would go on to work for the Rogers, Bowen and Rogers law firm. That job sparked his interest in law and he passed the bar in 1859. This marked his entry into the world of law and politics. In 1862, he started his own law firm and became Erie County's district attorney the following year. Number 6. Grover Cleveland supported Amerindian rights. It isn't true that Cleveland was responsible for the seizure of Amerindian lands, as those were already held in trust by the federal government. It was his predecessor, President Chester A. Arthur, who ordered those lands to be handed over to white settlers before he stepped down. Cleveland rescinded the order on April 17, 1885 and sent in troops to enforce his writ, but it did no good. Many Amerindians who held titles ended up selling their land for cash. Number 7. Grover Cleveland became the first president to marry in the White House. Cleveland became the second president to assume his position while still single, but the first to marry in the White House. His sister, Rose, had to therefore take up the duties of first lady initially. In 1885, however, Cleveland met Francis Folsom, a student at Wells College. 
She was among the first women to study at college, since higher education was not traditionally open to women. On June 2, 1886, they got married at the White House in the Blue Room, which still exists today. Number 8. Grover Cleveland fought corruption as mayor of New York City. Corruption was endemic to New York City and its surrounding state. Back then, it was a common practice to award state services, like street cleaning, to the highest bidder instead of to the lowest. While bad for the city's taxpayers, it was good for the company which won the bid, and for the politician who granted it. When Cleveland became the city's mayor in 1882, he fought such practices by publicly shaming those leaders responsible, paving the way for his presidency. Number 9. Grover Cleveland Killed Two Men Perhaps the most gruesome of our Grover Cleveland facts concern events that took place during his stint as Sheriff of Erie County from 1870 to 1873. In 1872, Patrick Morrissey was condemned to hang for murder. As sheriff, it was Cleveland's duty to either execute the man himself or pay a deputy $10 to do it for him. Already renowned for his tight purse strings, Cleveland chose to personally hang the man himself. In 1873, he hanged John Gaffney, another convicted murderer. Number 10. Grover Cleveland may have fathered an illegitimate child. In 1884, Cleveland ran for the presidency, but nearly lost because of the Halpin scandal. Maria Crofts Halpin accused him of being the father of her child and of corrupting her morals. The Republicans seized on this scandal, but, rather than deny it, Cleveland admitted that it was possible since he had had an affair with the woman. He even admitted paying her child support since 1874. The open and honest way in which he dealt with the scandal saved his campaign, allowing him to become president. Number 11. Grover Cleveland actually won his first presidential re-election. In 1888, Cleveland ran for a second term with the Democrats' full approval, but was defeated by Republican Benjamin Harrison. Harrison's victory, however, was based only on the electoral votes in the swing states of New York, New Jersey, and Indiana. As far as the nationwide popular vote was concerned, however, Cleveland was the actual winner. It was later discovered that the Republican victory in Indiana was the result of fraudulent voting practices, but Cleveland accepted the result with grace. Number 12. Grover Cleveland lived a Spartan life despite being a successful lawyer. As early as 1866, Cleveland had already become a renowned lawyer, famous for successfully defending some high-profile, but poor, clients for free. Financial success, however, finally came about in 1868 after he successfully defended the editor of the commercial advertiser magazine against a libel suit. Those victories earned him more clients and more wealth. Despite this, he continued to live a simple life in a boarding house because most of his money went toward supporting his widowed mother and younger sisters. Number 13. Cleveland's Controversial Vetoes When Cleveland was president, he received a number of requests from Civil War veterans for pensions. Cleveland took the time to read through each request, vetoing any that he felt were fraudulent or lacking in merit. He also vetoed a bill that would allow disabled veterans to receive benefits no matter what caused their disability. 